Hello and welcome to another tutorial on Maxwell Zone. So uh, today being a very hot summer's day, I thought that it would be nice to do a tutorial on the Maxwell Sea uh, because I really like to be at the sea, but uh, unfortunately I have to sit in front of the computer and work. C'est la vie. So um, let me just create quickly a Maxwell Sea extension object. So. Pretty often people ask me um, basically the same question regarding the Maxwell C extension. Uh, the problems they're having is that first of all, they don't really understand the relationship between this, the scale parameter here. So the scale of the extension object itself and the dimension setting here, because it's confusing. It seems that both of them do uh, the same thing. So I'm gonna try to explain that first of all. And then the second most common question is that they say that it's pretty easy to get this, uh, you know, sort of a rougher looking sea surface. That's pretty easy. By default, that, that's what you get really. Uh, but it, they don't really understand how to create surfaces like this, for example. It's, uh, this is virtually completely flat but it has lots of small little waves that are very detailed and pretty sharp looking. Uh, so we're also going to take a look how we can create uh, sea surfaces like this for instances where you want a swimming pool or a lake or things like that. Um, so then, first of all, the dimension parameter. What you're really interested in here is really just the dimension parameter here by the by the Maxwell C extension. This really lets you specify how big of a patch of C do you want this one meter rectangle to represent because right now it's one meter. So we're sort of packing in 250 meters of C or detail into this one meter patch of C. So if I for example set my camera view like this now and let me just quickly add a material. So I'm just using a basic uh, zero roughness, uh, oops, zero roughness material that's not even transparent because I'm not interested in seeing the bottom of the sea. So in that case, uh, an opaque material with zero roughness works very well. I just have to turn on the sun. Hello, sun. And just change the time so it looks less boring, something like that. Okay, so the thing is, let's say you have a, a boat here that takes up 10 meters. So you want to increase the size of this uh, sea extension plane. So let's say we make it 100 meters. You have to think of this really as, as if you're zooming in on a bitmap image because you can see now that all the, the this little tiny detail is lost. It's just like if you have a, a bitmap, okay, and then I zoom in on it. That's what changing the scale does really. You're just zooming in on the individual pixels, so to speak, or the polygons on that uh, sea surface. So to remedy that, when you zoom in like this and you want to have a, a close-up, and by the way, you can see that if I zoom out to see the entire surface again, it looks exactly the same as it did when it was one meter. So the scale here doesn't influence at all uh, the look of the sea surface itself. Okay, so let's zoom in here again. So what you have to do to bring back detail now is really you have to increase the resolution and that's the quality setting here. It increases the number of polygons. So if I set it here very much higher. So it's going to take a little while to to voxelize the scene. You can see that we get, you know, all that detail back and it looks much nicer than before. And also the second parameter that's important is to set the minimum wavelength to something very low. And usually I set this really, really low. So now it's one millimeter, just so I can forget about the parameters. So I know that no matter how high quality uh, I set this to, it can go to 8,000 by 8,000 polygons and on my machine that would just make it explode. But um, 
I know that I'm not going to lose any detail because I have the minimum wavelength set too high because for example if I set this to one meter you can see that I'm going to lose uh, a lot of the, this fine detail in the waves okay you can see that doesn't look good at all so really I just set this to very low one millimeter you're not going to reach any detail of one millimeter anyway even with the uh, 8,000 I think so I just set it to that and I forget about the minimum wavelength parameter okay next thing that can be a bit confusing is the relationship between the vertical scale and the dimension okay so if we look at the manual this is what it says it says if the dimension is small but the vertical scale is high you will get a very displaced wave surface but actually I found that I'm not sure if this is a bug or uh, if, if the manual is wrong but I found actually that it's exactly the opposite if I have a small if I have a large dimension then I have to be more careful and lower the vertical scale or the sea surface just gets distorted so let's take a look at that just gonna lower the the resolution so it renders a bit it voxelizes a bit faster uh, okay so you can see now that as I increase the dimension if I make it 500 meters you can see now how much more displaced the the surface gets so if I want it if I want to get it back I have to start lowering the vert, uh, vertical scale Okay, so that's something strange. Maybe that will change, and uh, it will it will be like um, like it says in the manual. Uh, but for now, just keep in mind that it's actually reversed <laughs> the way it is written in, in the manual. So be careful with the dimension setting and the virtual scale because they're pretty sensitive. I mean, if if I increase dimension to say two two thousand meters, you can see how screwed up it looks so I really have to set this lots lots lower something like that okay so now about the swimming pool image um, what happens now that if you want to make these waves smaller okay so you uh, they're too agitated now you can start lowering the vert vertical scale. Oops. But you see now that has the effect of, I mean, I still have these big ridges here. It's not completely flat and also the waves have sort of lost their, their they're just not there anymore. They're, they're too faded okay and let me just set this back to a smaller value so I can raise the vertical scale okay so how can we get back those nice looking waves without having such a distorted overall surface and actually I found a pretty strange correlation between the wind speed and the dimension setting so actually if I lower the wind speed you can see what's going to happen the surface gets a lot flatter okay you can see now I have a virtually flat surface but I still have those little waves and now because the surface is so flat I can even increase the vertical scale some more maybe set to one okay and now you can see I'm getting those uh, small little sharp waves here and also I can enable the choppiness to have a little more sharper ridges okay so really that's the trick you have to mind the the wind speed and so the default is 30 and you can see now that you know this is much too displaced um, but I can set it to 5 
and I get a virtually flat surface with smaller waves. And now I think I need to also increase the detail to get a little bit more detail in, the, in these little waves. If you want to do a close up or something like that. And you can see now I have a little bit more detail. And actually I would have even more detail with if I set this to, you know, 2048 because I've set the, the minimum wavelength so small. So it's still going to extract detail the more resolution you set. But I'm going to keep it at 1000 just to, to keep this tutorial fast. Um, so yeah, that's how you can get these little waves. And again, if I want to increase the this, so let's say, okay, I need a sea surface that's 500 meters now. And if I keep the same zoom level, okay, now these waves are maybe too small, then again, I can use, or too big, sorry. Uh, I can lower even more the wind speed. And you can see that the waves are gonna get smaller. Okay, and now I can even increase, let's try this. It's gonna take a little while longer <laughs> for the voxelization. Dum, dum, dum. So since we have about four times as many polygons, it's going to take roughly three, four times longer to to voxelize. But you can see now I've got back that, that detail and I've sort of controlled the, the height of the waves, of these little waves, just by the wind speed. I didn't touch at all the, the vertical scale because I, I wanted to keep these small sharp little waves so that can work pretty nicely uh, oops actually let me set this back to 1000 because now the viewport is slow too because it can't show all the all those little tiny polygons let me maybe set this to bounding box And finally, one thing to note is that the the smaller you have your dimension set to, the more sensitive uh, this wind speed parameter is going to be. So just to show you, if I set this to just be 25 meters, and now it's completely flat because the vertical scale is much too small now for this small uh, dimension. So have to increase this, let's see, maybe 10. Uh, 50. Okay, let's make it 500. I think maybe I increase it too much if it gets too distorted. Let me see. Maybe fire is crashing. Uh -oh. Let me pause it and get back to <laughs> this. So we're back. Uh, so yeah, studio uh, crashed a little bit there. It happens. Um, so getting back to where we were, uh, so here I have a very large dimension surface and for that I need a very small vertical scale or it's going to get completely distorted. And again, I can choose to make this these waves look sharper or flatter just by the wind speed. So if I set it a little bit higher, we're going to get a little bit higher waves. But the, the surface itself is still going to be pretty much you know, flat and get these nice 
small sharp looking uh, waves and what I was saying is that the, the wind speed becomes more sensitive to changes the, the smaller the dimension is. So to show you that, and by the way, if I now also increase the vertical scale a bit, you can get even sharper looking uh, small waves. Maybe it's going to look too exaggerated. Let's see there. Okay, you can see it's, it's a pretty good combination too. Let's see, with five, I think it's going to be a little bit too much. No, well, still looks okay. So then, um, if I lower the dimension now, let's see. Well, it's going to get flatter and flatter because, let me just change the resolution so it's faster. Uh, there, if I say 500, eventually it's going to start looking completely flat because I have to also start raising the, the virtual scale. So let's say I have a, a patch that's 25 meters. So now it looks like a mirror. I have to raise this to maybe 5, let's see, 50. Wonder fifty. <laughs> well, something like that. Uh, you can see now that because the dimension is smaller, uh, less of a wind speed is going to make a more uh, a larger effect because this this patch of sea is is smaller. So here then we have to start lowering the the wind speed so we get that flat plane again. maybe even more so now you see that uh, because we have such a small patch of sea the, this, the changes you make to the wind speed here are going to be really sensitive uh, even 0 0.7 and 1 can make a difference let's see if we increase this to 500 vertical scale so we got a little bit better defined small waves Like that, and I think we're we're hitting the limit of what we can see with this resolution. So I'm just going to increase it again to 1024. Yeah, so we you can see the waves are a little bit sharper again. So yeah, here then with the smaller dimension, the wind speed parameter becomes really sensitive, and you can you have to do very small changes for a pretty big effect. Okay, so uh, hopefully that's helpful, <laughs> hopefully that's helpful, and if you like this video, please as usual, share it, like it, and stuff like that on the social medias of the interwebs, and uh, see you next time, bye.